The 2017 and 31st Bunbury Festival was held here at the idyllic Stowe School. It's the first chance for the best under 15s in the country to stake their claim as a future England star. The reason I started the Bunbury Festival, Tom, is that they ran out of money. The uh, England schools under 15 festivals would, would have actually packed up. And they said, Dave, would you, you know, cough up the dosh to do it? And I thought it was a privilege being asked. I said, on one condition, that we call it the Bunbury English Schools Cricket Festival after my children's books. There's Ian Buntham and Viv Radish. Yeah, man, you know, from Bunny Beedos, you know, how you doing, boy? Dennis Lettis from Melbourne. Rodney Munch from Brisbane and all that. All these books, you know, and they thought I was a psychopath. Beefy calls me a loony. I'm, I'm happy to be a loony. When we present the caps, Tom, to the boys, they're always laughing at me. And I said to one of them, well, why, why do you always laugh at me, lads? He said, well, you're, you're, a, you're a nutter. I said, well, that's great. I'm happy to be a nutter. The way they get in, Tom, is this. They play for their school team, their county, their region, then Bunbury Festival. So these boys here this week at Stowe are the 56 best cricketers aged under 15 in the country. But they've all done very well to get here. And one of the lads said to me, Dave, what happens if we don't do well at the Bunbury Festival? He said, it doesn't matter, because you've done well to get here. And what you must do, whatever got you here, carry on doing, because it's a festival. We're going to have some fun. It's the first national tournament, age group tournament. Um, there are schools tournaments, there are club tournaments, there are county tournaments, but not on a regional basis like this. So it, it's an attempt, the first stage is an attempt to get the best to play against the best. For me, this is a learning experience. It's the first time these players have probably been taken from their own counties um, and put together with the best of the rest from around the country. So one where they sit within their own peer group. Um, we're obviously looking for long-term development as well. So it's just a great opportunity to see how they fit into a, a group of players that they've never met before, um, what they can learn from the week and, and how they progress. And the opportunity for them to showcase what skills they have now. For one form of Bunbury, the 2017 festival had extra significance. I'm here as a parent rather than a pundit, which is um, a change and more of a nerve-wracking one. I'm not a good watcher. He's batting at the moment over my left shoulder and he's got a few, so you relax when they've got a few. It's the first time that you're measuring yourself against your peers. Not that I didn't particularly think of it that way when I was 15. Um, but it's great fun, you're a week away from home, you're with your contemporaries, so you're starting to make friends across the regions and starting to kind of just have a look at who else is around. So in my year, NASA was playing, Mark Ramprakash, Trevor Ward, has some good cricketers around, and you're starting to get competitive then by 15. You want to try and be the best you can be. I think it's the first time that the ECB start to take note of some players. So. Both, the, all the games this week will be recorded and put on the ECB's database for scouts and coaches to look at. And they're just starting to take notice of good players. But I don't think that it should be seen as the be-all and end-all. There'll be many good players who don't come through the Bunbury, who go on and play first class, who can go on and play for England. There'll be late developers. There'll be lots of players who star at this age group who don't go on and make it. So by no means should it be seen as the be-all and end-all. But... At the end of the day, this, it, some things never change. It's still down to the players themselves. You, can't, you can help them, you can't do it for them, and they have to be left at some stage to sink or swim. They have to make their own mistakes, learn from their own mistakes, and they have to do it themselves in the end. So um, for me as a parent, that's why I try and stay out of the way most of the time. When I look back, you know, Tom, I'm really glad to talk to you about this, Tommy, because people always say, well, what about the boys you saw who you thought would go and play and didn't? Sam Northeast of Kent, I'd have put my house on him playing for England. James Hildreth of Somerset. The one who hit it hardest was David Sales from Surrey. He hit the ball so hard, as did Triscothic. But Marcus Triscothic, that was 1991 at Bromsgrove, when we had Phil Neville, when Alex Ferguson came down and said, all right, son, He's French, you know, Alex Ferguson. So more than one. He said, Philip and his dad's there, Neville Neville. That's great, isn't it? Imagine being called Neville Neville. It's like being David Dave. He said, now, son, are you going to pick cricket or football? And I said, hang on, Mr Ferguson, he's only 15. Cricket or football? I want to know now. And he picked football. And I think he played for England 80 times, football. But Freddie Flintoff, 
he said he was the best cricketer he ever saw at 15. 868 have played first-class cricket, so I've watched it grow, but I just think, it's funny, Tommy, I'm basically a fan. And this week, it's great just to sit on the boundary, surrounded by bounders from previous years playing. David Capel cycled here 17 miles, and uh, we had a few wines, so I think he got back a bit quicker than he came here. He was here. Graham Clinton's been here. Uh, Les Lenham, Neil Lenham, and you have snatches of conversations with old Bunbury boys uh, who come back and see the young buns, which is, is fantastic. The week culminated with the traditional dinner and prize giving, where awards were given out to the standout performers. But it was London and the South East who took the spoils. So that brings to an end another successful Bunbury festival filled with runs, wickets, laughter and friendships. And you never know, we may have just seen a future England captain. <laughs>